Oui. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you at the House of God today at Friendship. And those who are listening in and see on Facebook, we thank you for joining us too today for the service. At the end of your search for a friendly church. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing 257. 257. Go tell it on the mountain. universe, who has given us a beautiful day to worship you. And Lord, 
we're so thankful for those who are attendants today. God, that uh, they are here because uh, you encourage us to fellowship one with another. And Father, they're here because they love you. Lord, those who cannot be here because of sickness or maybe because of fear of the corona and listening on Facebook, we pray, dear God, that you would bless them this morning. Lord, the, those that are listening on the radio, the FM uh, signal, dear God, that you would be a, a blessing to everywhere, in their cars, in their homes, wherever they're at. Lord, help us to worship you in truth and in the in Jesus' name. Is there any other announcements that I've missed you now? No, no services. I forgot Wednesday night. Uh, you mean, were we going to have it this Wednesday night? Yeah. Before, as far as I know, we were. Uh, okay. Savannah made Were we know any different? Uh, listen to your telephone and read your text message because uh, Kathy will put it there. And aren't you, aren't you glad that? Kathy uh, does that, uh, especially prayer requests. Uh, uh, and, Kathy, and not only Kathy, but uh, Savannah too takes over when she's not there. So thank you. We've got a little difference in the different voices sometimes. But, uh, thank you for serving God in this way. 259, Angels from the Realm of Glory.
see this thing that is happening. Oh, come all you faith. Oh, that's pretty nice. Oh, that's your nice. Oh, we can do it. That's all right. That's nice. Oh, that's all right. scare you off the first time, so I'll do better this time, but uh, I really appreciate being able to preach the Word of God to you this morning. It is an honor, it is a joy, and I'm so glad to share that with you. I really hope that uh, you had an incredible Christmas. Uh, it is wonderful that we get to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Him coming down to earth being born in a manger so that we could one day live with him forever. He lived as a man to save us from our sins, and we worship him, and we're so thankful for his birth. So I hope you had a blessed Christmas this year. Let's pray. Father, we come before you now humbly. Lord, we might not know a lot, but we know that you are good. You take care of us. You love us dearly. Help us to uh, open our ears, open our hearts to what you have to tell us this morning. And thank you for my family here. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the sermon today is called uh, Waiting for Nothing to Happen. And the passage we'll be reading from is 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 16. We get to read about Elijah, some of his adventures. He's one of my favorite uh, people in the Bible. I'm going to read 1 Kings 17, 1 through 16. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord... The God of Israel lives, before whom I stand. There shall be neither dew nor rain these years, except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him. Depart from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook Cherith, that is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, 
and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And after a while, the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And Elijah called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple sticks that I might go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, Neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Let's pray. Father, your word is holy and it is true. Please speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I'm sorry to start off the sermon with a disappointment. Maybe you came here, and this is, uh, you know, a Sunday towards the end of the year, and you wanted someone to wrap up 2020 for you. You wanted someone to speak poetically, speak elegantly, say, uh, talk about all the ups and downs, and how crazy it was, and we made it to the end of 2020, and this and that and the other. I'm going to have to disappoint. I'm not going to do that. Other people have done it better than I ever could, and so I, I think I'm going to go in a different direction. I want to talk about today, the 27th of December. I find these few days between Christmas and New Year's to be a little strange, and I wonder if you feel the same way. What do you do? We, we just celebrated Christmas, and uh, if you're like my family and you keep your decorations up till Easter, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's still kind of festive uh, a little bit. You might have your decorations up, and your fridge still may have leftovers, which are incredible, by the way. But it's not quite Christmas anymore, right? Christmas was a couple days ago. It's, we're, we're not quite there. But it's also not New Year's either. New Year's is coming up, and we're excited, and the cliche is very true. Um, I can stay up till midnight on every day except for New Year's Eve. I get to about 10 or 11 o'clock, and I'm looking at my now wife, and I'm like, can we do this? And she's like, let's go to sleep. No, just kidding. Uh, but it's a struggle on New Year's Eve. The one day you're supposed to stay up till midnight, and I normally can't except for that day. But anyways, it's not New Year's yet. So Christmas happened. New Year's will happen. But it's the 27th of December. And... and it's a little weird. What, what do you do with it? You're in this middle gray kind of black area. Like, you know, it's, you're right in between. It's the room temperature pizza of days. It's better than cold pizza, for sure. It's also not fresh and exciting quite yet either. Enough with the analogies. I'm going to shoot straight with you. Your life might not thaw. Uh, your life might not thaw. English is a tough I forgot how to speak it for a moment. Your life isn't what you thought it would be. Maybe it's your marriage. It was once so new and exciting, full of endless possibilities. Now it kind of seems like your roommates living in the same house. Sure, you're cordial and polite, and marriage is 
believe me, it can get a lot worse than being cordial and polite. You can be playing frisbee with pots and pans. Um, but that's about it. You didn't sign up for politeness. You're kind of waiting for something to happen. Maybe it's your job. You thought you were going places with the job. You thought this was your ticket to a, maybe a different style of life. But you've been there for a moment and you're kind of stuck in a rut. And you wonder, is this it? You're waiting. Maybe it's your kids, your in-laws, your house, the list goes on and on. Life isn't what you thought it would be. At one point, you were excited to wake up. Now you, you feel a little, I don't know. You figure that one day that feeling might come back, whether something changes or maybe Jesus comes back, who knows. But for now, you're just existing. You're in the 27th of December phase of life between exciting possibilities. You're waiting with no point. You are waiting for nothing to happen. So we're going to go back to our reading. So a little background. Uh, if you know Israelite history, it's, it's a similar theme. Israel is in a sad time with a sad king in charge. Ahab is a wicked man, and whenever Israel was led by a wicked ruler, it did wicked things. As a punishment, God, through Elijah, stopped the rain. Elijah was hiding from King Ahab and was probably a little upset that there was no rain. I don't know, like your whole economy depends on the rain, and this one random guy decides, hey, it's not going to rain anymore. You might be a little upset. In fact, upset is the wrong word. I get upset when my friends put pineapples on a pizza and they make me eat it. That, I get upset. Can you imagine how angry King Ahab felt when a random person decided there would be no rain? Anyways, Elijah's hiding because he doesn't want to die. He, you know, it's like, I doesn't want to die. So birds would bring him food. And he would drink from a brook. And that took care of him for a while. And this continued until the brook dried up. The drought was devastating. And this particular widow was suffering. She had enough food for one more meal. Imagine that. I don't know what your houses look like. I bet they're beautiful. And I bet they have lots of food. But just imagine you have one meal left. She was going to eat it with her son. They were going to wait and die. She was waiting for nothing to happen. And I sincerely hope that none of you are starving this morning. If you are, please talk to me. Please talk to someone here. We would love to get you food. No, for many of us, our waiting today has nothing to do with food or that we lack food. Our waiting is because our heart has grown cold and weary on the inside. For some of us, the light of hope has gone out. And we operate as machines. We operate out of habit and not of passion. What is the answer? Is there hope? So what happens in the story? Elijah asks the widow to give him and by extension, the Lord, some food. He was a man of God, and he was hungry. Now, if you're the woman, what would you do? So this is where I'm going to blur her stories with yours a little bit. If you were the woman, what would you do? Elijah asks you to trust him. He's a stranger. You're supposed to help strangers in need, right? But this is your last meal. Surely, Elijah could have gone somewhere else. God could have chosen someone else. Why you? Why is God picking on you? I mean, you want God to help you, sure. You want God to feed you and clothe you and give you passion and joy for life. But you might not want him to ask anything of you. You want God's benefits without obedience. His help. 
but not himself. All of these thoughts, or none of these thoughts, may have been going through the widow's mind. Uh, widow's mind. She only has one mind, by the way. But do you know what she did? She humbly obeyed God. And she gave Elijah food. God took care of her and she had everything she needed until the drought was over. God provided. But the key here is verse 15. As humans, we love a good comeback story, right? So if you, if you like sports, there are a lot of good comeback stories. Um, I think of maybe Alex Smith with the Washington, I believe they're called now, the Washington football team. He had a terrible injury. Now he came back. A lot of good sports stories, a lot of good life stories about comebacks, and we feed off of that. They give us hope. We're like, if they did it, maybe I can do it. We cry with the widow when we read about her suffering in verse 12. She's about to die with her son, and you'd have to be a really cool person when you read about her suffering and be like, well, what's wrong with you? Get over it. Like, we feel for her. And then we skip to the end, and we read the, uh, this portion of the story, uh, we read in verse 16 that God provided, and we get excited. So we, we suffer with her, we feel for her, and then we're like, awesome, God provided for you, that's great. But the key here isn't verse 12 and verse 16, they're, they're important. The key here for the purposes of this sermon is verse 15. She obeyed God. So I have a coworker, as a couple of you know, I work at the Walmart Distribution Center, and I have a coworker, and uh, well, I used to, he doesn't work there anymore, but Lord forgive me, he smelled really bad. I mean, that's, I can't put it anyway, he smelled really bad. Um, I, I'm sure that sailors learned their language from him. He had a, quite the vocabulary. Um, he just, uh, whenever we would talk, he loved to talk about the different drugs he was taking. He was quite the character. He had quite, you know, just a wild personality. And I remember one day, my manager was like, hey, Nate, uh, yeah, tonight you're going to be working with him. And if you know me, I get along with most people. I'm very friendly. But inwardly, I was like, what? why? There are other people. Why would you put me with him? Why, 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 why? And God convicted me. He's like, how dare you, how dare you think of my beautiful creation in this way? A man who is equal to you in worth and value and someone I love very dearly. I said, all right, Lord, you're right. I'm sorry. I have a wicked, selfish heart. And so I worked with him. And through talking to him, he opened up. He talked about his childhood, some of the things he was struggling with. And I was able to share the gospel with him. I don't know, know the end of his story quite yet. Um, but I know that just something simple as a gospel presentation would never have opened up if I hadn't worked with him that night. And in my wicked, selfish heart, I was like, I'll work with someone else. God, can I work with someone I don't like? I mean, come on. And, and God was like, no. I ask something simple of you. Humbly obey me in faith. And that's what the widow did. She obeyed God and he provided. I have a question for you here today. Do you obey God? Is there still a small voice in your life? Are you a humble servant, not like me? Are you a humble servant, patient and attentive? to the will of our Lord. We read in Psalm 40, verses 7 through 10. You don't have to go there. I'll read it. Then I said, this is the psalmist, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. 
What does verse 8 say? Again, that was Psalm 40, verses 7 through 10. What does verse 8 say? I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Let me tell y'all something. Human obedience to our Savior is intimately connected to joy in our hearts. It's the small things repeated throughout the years that lead to sustained, consistent happiness. It's the small things, like showing up to work on time and working hard, that leads you to appreciate making a living wage. It's the small things, like keeping your word to your spouse through the years and being kind and patient that leads you to appreciate a marriage. It's the small things like tucking your children into bed and taking them to practice that helps you to appreciate raising a family. God has you in the place that he does for a reason. What is that reason? Humble obedience. Saying yes to the small things to God as the years go by may never change your life in a wild, crazy way. I'm not saying that God will let you win the game show, win the lottery, move into a mansion. I don't know. If those things happen, great. But I make no promises. No. Humble obedience through the 27th of December type of days, type of seasons. When everything seems so ordinary and usual and you're just tired of it, Humble obedience will lead to something even more valuable. A change of heart. You see, the problem was never Christmas being on one side and you're excited. There's joy. It's incredible. The problem was never New Year's on the other side where you're like, all I need is a blank slate. All I need is a fresh start. I bet y'all didn't come this morning to hear stories of the Walmart Distribution Center. But guess what? You signed up for it, so that's what I'm going to do. So at Walmart, uh, the, the Distribution Center, I have a very simple job. Are you ready for it? If it's too complicated, let me know, and I'll help you through it. I take boxes, and I put them on a conveyor belt. And I do this for hours and hours and hours. And sometimes I get tired of it because, you know, I'm selfish, and I'm whiny, and I just want my way. And I, you know, when it's 2 a.m. in the morning, I work weekend night shifts. Um, sometimes it's tough. I'm like, God, what if I just don't want to be doing this? What if, like, I just, I'm very blessed, and I throw that in, you know, cliche, the token, thank you, God, but, thank you, God, but. It's like, do I have to do this? And I realize something. The problem is not the job. I'm blessed to take care of a family. The problem is my heart. The problem is that we forget our Savior who died on a tree so that you and I can humbly obey him out of thankfulness. We forget that Jesus Christ has blessed us with everything from salvation to a good community and the opportunity to live a good normal, ordinary life. Jesus Christ was humbly obedient to his Father. And this led him to work an ordinary job as a carpenter. For all his troubles, Jesus Christ died for you and me. Instead of waiting for nothing to happen, if you're like me, you can be selfish and prideful. We wander around and we're blown here and there by the wind. We can wait with purpose. So how should Christians wait when they're in the 27th of December between seasons? I'm going to read from Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 37. These are the words of Jesus. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, 
so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for servants and have them recline at a table, and he will come to serve them. Psalm 25, verse 5, we read the psalmist who says, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you, what's this? For God, our Savior, creator of the universe, for you, I wait all the day long. Do we wait all the day long? So what do we do when we wait? Are we waiting for nothing to happen? No. We wait for God. We look for him. We thank him. While we wait, we, uh, we obey like the widow did. Because of our faith that God provides. The problem is not the 27th of December. It is a rather in-between type of Sunday. Sandwiched between two exciting holidays. It is ordinary and irregular. The problem is not the day or the season of life. But the condition of our heart. We've forgotten how to thank God for the little things. And to see God in the little things. Do you thank God? When he gives you a stress-free commute to work or to school? Do you thank God that when you look at your phone and you need someone to talk to, you have friends and family you can reach out to who sincerely care about you? Do you thank God for that coffee maker that helps you get started on your day? What about that lousy, terrible car that still gets you where you need to go? Do you see God when the sun is shining and the flowers bloom? Do you see God when the rain is falling and the ground rejoices? Do you see God in the pure laugh of a happy child? Or when animals play and dance in a field? When it comes to your in-laws? I'm sorry, I got nothing. That's hopeless, and you should totally despair. Just kidding. If my in-laws are watching, I love you. You're incredible. Don't uh, shoot me. No, I'm just kidding. I have great in-laws. That friendly neighbor who always waves to you has been there for quite some time. And so has your loving church family with you today. The blessings have always been there for us to notice. All right, so this next sentence is so important. I underlined it on my paper, so I'm going to read it twice because I have to. All right. Until we have, all right, you ready for this? And I, I started it. Well, let me try again. Unless we have a heart of humble obedience to God that leads to joy, we will miss God's blessings because we won't be grateful enough to notice them. Unless we have a heart of humble obedience to God that leads to joy on the inside, we will miss God's blessings because we won't be grateful enough to notice them. Church, my family, there is a beautiful glory in the ordinary. There is a beautiful extravagance to a life that is normal and regular for Jesus Christ. We are endlessly blessed to do the will of God wherever he leads us. We are blessed to have a family. We are blessed to go to school and have a job. We are blessed to have a home. Sometimes in the routine of life, we forget the blessing of routine. We forget the blessing of stability. Let's go back to the widow in 1 Kings chapter 17. There's more to the story, though we don't have time to go over it. And I really hope you go on and read it. Later down the road, her son ends up dying, tragically, but Elijah raises him from the dead. There's more spiritual growth. In the same way, there is more to your story. 
you're not at the end of the road. New Year's is coming. And 2021 has more adventures. At this point, you might be like, oh, I sure hope not. But 2021 is right around the corner. We came from the time of Christmas. And like I said, I hope it was a refreshing time. I know it can be stressful planning. Maybe you didn't actually get to celebrate with loved ones. And that's very sad. My heart breaks for you. But uh, our Savior came to earth. And if you think about it, that's incredible. That is, it, it blows the mind when we think about it. And uh, when we dwell on it, when we meditate, it's beautiful. And then New Year's is around the corner, and I don't know your 2021 plans. Maybe you're like, I didn't get to do certain things. I'm going to go party. I'm going to go on the greatest vacation ever. I don't know. And I hope 2021 is an incredible year for you. But for those of us in the middle, the basic truth does not change. If you're waiting for nothing to happen, just going through the motions and feeling dead on the inside, a strange man might come your way. He might ask for something simple, like a meal. What will you do? Will you obey God in the small things? My advice to you is this. Wait for God. Obey him humbly and with joy in your heart. Remember the many blessings he has given us. God is present. He is here, and we're so thankful and blessed to get to serve him Amen. every day. He is our mighty Lord. Let's pray. Father, I'm thankful for this church here. I'm thankful that you give us the chance to obey you humbly out of faith. You provide. You are present. We glorify you. We worship you. We don't deserve you, Father. We don't deserve the gospel that you have given through your Son, Jesus Christ. But we're thankful that we get to obey you on the 27th of December. You love us even though we don't deserve your love. Thank you. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. If you hear the message of God this morning, he is faithful. Is he not? Supplying the widow's need, and he supplies ours today. If you do not know him as your personal Savior this morning, I would ask for you to ask him to come into your life because he wants to. If you have a need, Ask him if he wants to supply that need. So as we stand and sing, number 601. lesson today. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Are we looking forward to Christ coming? Let's tell the world that he's here. Any other word?